Greetings loves, it is I, Tactical Girlfriend. Welcome back to the channel. I hope everybody's doing well. Today I'm going to be talking about bolt carrier groups, specifically regarding the AR platform. Now there's a lot of different things that you need to know about the bolt carrier group, specifically when it comes to maintenance cycles, replacing parts, and just bear in mind that it's the weakest point of the AR platform. Most of the failures that you see in the AR are going to happen within your bolt carrier group and your bolt. So there's a lot of things to consider when it comes to making sure that this thing keeps running and there's ways to upgrade it to increase longevity that I will get into. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, switching views here, I've got my BCM bolt carrier group. This one is specifically out of my 14 and a half inch build that I've been running for some years here. And I do kind of just want to review some of the common failure points to look out for. Now I'm going to first put on some gloves because when handling gun parts, you should not be gross. These things are very nasty. No matter how much I've cleaned this thing, it will just not be very healthy to have all sorts of residue all over the place. Okay, so the first thing that I want to look at on the bolt carrier group is going to be my gas keys. You're gonna have two little bolts over here and here, and they should be staked on either side. These come staked from the factory. If yours are not staked, you're definitely gonna to wanna to do that because these things are operating under a lot of pressure and they're kind of the heart of your entire gas system. So you definitely wanna make sure that these things are tight and that they're not traveling. And keep an eye on the staking too. That's the main thing here. Always just monitor this every time you clean and just make sure that the staking looks correct and that those indentations are going into the bolts on your gas key. Now I am gonna take apart my bolt carrier group here so that you can see the internals that I need to discuss next. Take my cam pin out and then the bolts. So the next thing that you're gonna wanna worry about is gonna be your gas rings right here. There's gonna be three of them. Um, these are important because when they wear down, you're gonna have a leaky system and it's not gonna work quite right. You will run into cycling issues if you let these rings wear down. Now, there's a couple of methods to determining whether or not you need to replace the gas rings on your bolt. The first thing you do is take your bolt carrier group, put your bolt in the extended position and just stand it on the bolt face. If it collapses on its own weight, that means that you probably should at the very least consider replacing those gas rings soon. This is not a be all determination, it just means that you're getting close at the very least. Now a way to determine if you need to for sure replace those gas rings in your bolt is to simply get your bolt into the retracted position in your bolt carrier group and then hold it upside down and just give it a good shake. If your bolt stays retained in the retracted position, which it is, that means that you're good for now. You don't need to panic. You don't need to replace those just yet, but those gas rings do need to get maintained sooner or later. If your bolt actually just falls right out into the extended position, then you know you need to actually replace them ASAP. Now, you could run into the exact opposite problem. Your O-rings might be out of spec, they might be a little too fresh, they just simply might not be fitted on properly, or they need lubrication. In this event, what you can do to test this is actually put your bolt into the retracted position, and then we're gonna do what I like to call the flick test, where you simply just take the bolt carrier group from the other end and give it a good flick. Now, as you can see, the bolt has gone to the extended position, which is what it should do. If it doesn't, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that those gas rings are in spec and just make sure that it's well lubricated. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to be aware of are the locking lugs on the bolt. These keep the bolt locked into place in the chamber and achieve that seal that you need for proper operation. Now, these tend to shear off eventually over time. So if they do shear off, it should be very obvious, but more importantly, before they shear off, they start to develop some stress fractures in the metal itself. So definitely, every time you clean your bolt, make sure that you're keeping a good eye on all these little teeth and just make sure that those lugs are intact and they're not at risk for getting sheared off. Another big one to be aware of is the firing pin itself. The very tip of this will eventually break if you run it long enough. That is just a simple fact of life. This is a high wear part and it does need to get replaced whenever it starts to run into those issues. You're probably gonna notice this, it should be very obvious. You'll have a bunch of failures to fire. 
and you can just visually inspect it and see that the tip has broken off. So just get familiar with the way that that tip should look and keep an eye on it as you use it. Another really big one is going to be your extractor spring. These do eventually wear out. You definitely need to make sure that those are intact, otherwise you will start to have some failures to eject. It will become very obvious. That is one of the first things to look at. The extractor spring will just simply eventually wear out. Now on some carbine gas link systems, you're also gonna have a rubber O-ring that also should get replaced over time. Also, just keep an eye on the actual extractor lip itself. That part there is very high wear and that can snap off or just simply wear down to a point where it starts to fail to extract too. So having all those spare parts is really important. Also, side note, when it comes to all these parts, most of them do have a service life that is not determined by some general rule of thumb, but rather the manufacturer. So ask your manufacturer about all the parts in your bolt carrier group and how often after how many rounds you need to replace each part. Keep those things in mind, have a maintenance cycle, make a maintenance chart, and cycle these parts out to have some better preventative maintenance so that you don't run into problems when it matters most. Another really important part is going to be your cam pin. The cam pin is going to eventually shear off if you run these long enough. It's just gonna shear itself in half and it's gonna snap and break. Keep an eye on the cam pin to make sure there's, again, no stress fractures, just like the locking lugs and the bolts. Make sure that there's no signs of this eventually just snapping in two. The hole itself here, where the pin is retained, is also a weak point, so definitely keep an eye around those holes there. And generally, I recommend actually having a small indentation or marking on your cam pin where you orient the cam pin the same way in the bulk carrier group every time. I put a little dimple here so I know I want to face that forward. The reason for this is that if you constantly flip the cam pin around, you're gonna have wear coming from both sides and that actually wears the thing down much faster and that will decrease the overall service life. So it's a very avoidable thing if you just simply do a few things ahead of time to make sure that you are orienting this in the same way every time. Now let's talk about why you would want to upgrade your bolt carrier grip. For one, obvious one would be that you want less parts wear. Some bulk carry groups out there simply just are made better. They're made to last longer, they're made out of stronger materials, and they just have better designs to increase longevity. Another really popular reason that people want to run more enhanced bulk carry groups is because they're running things suppressed, myself included. Now, the BCM bulk carry group is certainly more than adequate, but it is, you know, very mil spec. It's nothing really fancy, there's no bells and whistles. It is a very classic design. Something like the LMT Enhanced Bolt Carrier Group is actually going to be a huge improvement in a lot of different ways. I got this from an internet friend who let me borrow it. I've tried it out, been running it, and really enjoying it. There's a lot of really cool features in this Bolt Carrier Group. It may not seem like much, it kind of, you know, looks very similar, but it's actually surprisingly different. There's a lot of really well thought out design features and materials that went into this that I'm going to go over right now. Now, this LMT Enhanced BCG is the full auto version. Um, it's full auto compatible, not that it really matters for most of us, myself included, but that is the one that was lent to me. And it weighs about 11 ounces. It's made out of 8620 carpenter steel and it has a manganese phosphate finish on the bulk carrier itself. Now, I don't know if you can see it, it is extremely subtle, but it does have an altered cam path to increase dwell time and enhance extraction. There's also some additional gas ports on the side. Note that this BCM has two, the LMT has three. That keeps gas moving through the ejection port and away from your face. This is extremely important when you're running suppressed. In fact, I did test this in both my 11 and a half inch build and my 14 and a half inch builds compared to the BCM in both of those builds, it was noticeable. Uh, there was definitely a lot less gas in my face. It made it much more pleasant to shoot. And it was especially noticeable in the 11 and a half inch build. I really, really appreciated those gas ports there. You will also notice that the gas hole on the side of the bolt carrier group is different from the BCM. 
That is to also improve gas flow along the bolt's tail, further allowing the system to run more fluidly, reliably, and also drag gases in a way that is more pleasant to the shooter. You'll notice on a traditional bolt carrier group also, you have a rail that will just run across all the way for the most part on the bolt carrier group. On the LMT, they have actually introduced relief grooves where they cut away some of the rails and only put as much material as you really need on the rails itself. And that's not to reduce weight or anything like that, but it is to help channel debris and keep lubrication moving so that everything is more reliable and running smoother. And you'll notice that the bolt itself is a completely different color. It does not have the normal phosphate finish that you would normally see on your bolt. This is for a very good reason. They actually improve the quality of steel. It's some sort of proprietary finish that they have, and this will help increase the overall lifespan and make it easier to clean as well. Now I have both of these extractors removed from their bolts. Something really important to note here. On your traditional extractor, you're gonna have one extractor spring. It's very simple. On this LMT, you're gonna notice it's got a lobster tail, which is pretty weird. And more importantly, there's no springs. They're actually going to be inside the bolt and there's two of them, hence the shape of the lobster tail. This is gonna increase the overall lifespan of your extractor and it's gonna make it more reliable for extraction. It's a huge thing. The extractor is one of the weakest points of the AR platform. You definitely wanna keep spares on hand and the LMT really has a brilliant design to help increase that service life. You will also notice that the locking lugs actually look fairly different on the LMT versus the traditional bolt. That is to increase the service life and reliability of it overall, just make it more robust and less prone to cracking. Now I wanna say the LMT Enhanced Bolt Carrier Group is very impressive to me. I immediately noticed the difference when running suppressors on both of my ARs, as I mentioned. I have not ran any exhaustive high round count tests on this. I have not pushed it to its limits but it does seem to be very well constructed and very well regarded for those reasons. So I would trust that and I would recommend it on that basis so much so that I'm probably gonna buy my own here soon. But you are simply given an option to upgrade your bulk carrier group if you want to. It's by no means necessary. You can run any bulk carrier group in anything that fits it basically. You just simply are gonna have different maintenance cycles for different parts, and this one should last a bit longer and it should suppress a bit better, which I certainly have discovered myself. There's many other options on the market, especially if you're running suppressed. An honorable mention would be the bootleg four position adjustable bolt carrier group, where you have four positions to adjust the amount of gas that's being ported out of the bolt carrier group. Very good for anybody who is running anything suppressed. It is definitely cheaper than the LMT, and I probably would recommend that blindly, having never tested it, just from what I've seen from other users. But with regards to the LMT itself, again, yeah, I haven't done any extensive testing on this, but so far, color me impressed. This is a really nice bulk carrier group, and I certainly want one for myself. Well, that about wraps up my presentation on bulk carrier groups. I really hope that this information was useful to you all. A lot of us are running AR platforms, so while this may not be the most glamorous and exciting topic, it is probably one of the most crucial ones. So bearing that all in mind, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell too. I also want to graciously thank everybody who is supporting this channel on Patreon as always. You all are the lifeblood of this channel, and I really couldn't do it without you. I don't like relying on ads, I don't like bothering my viewers with ads, I want this channel to be a free resource for you all but I do need to keep the lights on. So if you do want to go help out, you can always go to patreon.com slash tacticalgf. The biggest contributors are named at the end of the video. And that's a wrap. I really appreciate you all tuning in. Please be good to each other out there. And as always, please take care. Bye.